I'm Peter Block here in Denver, Colorado at TCT for On the Scene. And on my left is Bill Fearon from Stanford. <clears throat> FFR was put on the map by Fame 1, Bill. And uh, Bill has now followed Fame 2, an interesting trial, which I'll ask him to describe in just a minute, for three years. And the outcomes now are becoming very exciting. So, Bill, tell me what Fame 2 was to start with and then where we stand at the present time. So FAME2 was a study looking at patients with stable coronary disease and comparing optimal medical therapy alone to PCI. Uh, and the key difference between FAME2 and, say, COURAGE was that in order to be in the randomized portion of the study, you had to have at least one lesion with an abnormal FFR, meaning that we were looking at a patient population enriched with ischemia. So even though patients had a positive FFR, if you will, they were still randomized either to medical therapy or intervention, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And initially, it looked like things were pretty good for those people that got FFR, but the costs were higher. So now we have some cost analysis at three years. Exciting stuff because of... Well, what we found was that, uh, like you mentioned, initially, of course, it cost more to place a stent. But over the ensuing three years, because the patients in the medical therapy arm had more symptoms, lower quality of life, and a greater need for urgent revascularization in particular, those costs narrowed such that by three years, there was no difference in cost between the two arms. So as I understand it, and looking at the slides, which I got a peek of, um, the cost for the people that were randomized to medicine accumulate over time, whereas the FFR and PCI patients sort of remain relatively flat, don't they? Yes, that's correct. I mean, there's a, some events, of course, in the, in the PCI arm, but in general, it's fairly flat, and most of the difference is due to increased cost in the medical therapy arm. Now, at three years, are they even or just close? They're even, uh, basically uh, identical, and the, the key difference beyond just that the costs are even is that all along the, uh, the PCI patients felt better, uh, took fewer antianginal medications, so that when we did our quality adjusted life years analysis and our incremental cost effectiveness ratio, it was very favorable for PCI at basically $1,600 per quality adjusted life year gains. So it looks like going forward, those people that didn't get the PCI probably will have continuing a higher cost. So, Bill, very quickly, short version, take-home message from what you've learned at three years. I think the take-home message is if you have a patient with stable coronary disease and an abnormal FFR, doing PCI up front makes them feel better and have fewer events, and it costs the same by three years compared to medical therapy. And for any lesions that are around 70 or 65 and you're not sure, do an FFR. Yes. Thanks, Bill.